Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story. I wish I knew it was wrong with me. Sorry for the novel. Background. Me and my ex met at a New Year's Eve party. I threw out her mutual friends. She was a friend of my ex-girlfriend, current best friend. Who doesn't appear in the story, which is unfortunate as she's lovely. We got together and I moved to another state to be with her. We worked. She went to college. I worked more. Things definitely weren't perfect, but we were on the right track. We had friends. I liked her friends and got along with them. Life stuff and growing couple stuff. Including an adorable butt bun who liked to do psycho bunny laps, and I got into my second MVA. Eventually, she graduated. And as I was looking to start school, her grandmother got sick. We moved back to our home state to support her family. We started getting set up. We both got jobs and a nice little two-bedroom apartment. Just had to get a quick M's license to get to making some decent money. Little thing wearing there, but no huge issues. When our son was born a few years later, it was wonderful. We dealt with postpartum depression and got through it. I say we because if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Things still went okay. I worked in MS, but my life revolved around my family as my employer became well aware of. We lived in a small city. Sometimes we struggled, but it was never bad. Two miles from my work, one from hers. They were warning signs. We took our seven-month son to dinner. He fussed, not screaming, fuzzy, and she lost it, dragged him out of the restaurant, and then he was screaming. She threw him. And by that, I mean about three feet into the car seat in my car while screaming. I don't have any care of his arms. And floored away from us. She came home later and apologized. The nitpicking of me and my job, embracing it one minute and insulting it the next, calling me a loser and saying I'm smart, being a doting mother, wife, one minute, and then screaming the next. She eventually found her dream job. It was a ways away from our current apartment and the support network routes we had begun to get. I supported her decision and we relocated maybe a new beginning. Nope. There were good times and bad. The area we moved to had clicks. I'm not that type. She found her click quickly. I was left to my own devices. She would often have me bring her in lunch or supper and show off G. The actions continued while I was commuting an hour or more to work for five eights that could turn into twelves. She was at a daycare. We were drifting apart. I recommended we try marriage counseling. She tentatively agreed, never happened. She increased the tempo of her actions. She didn't want to be involved with her family or mine. Mine were uneducated and poor. Hers were bad people. I obliged, I just wanted her to be happy. The daycare provider told me she thought she might have autism and to get him checked. His mother was against it, insulted. I forced it and had him tested. Turns out, he is autistic. She said she hated me for having him tested. I tried to turn it into a positive. We can do something about it. Early intervention after all is the gold standard. Q research, setting up therapies, options, work to give him the best life he can have. I will never forget her Facebook post mourning the loss of my perfect child. She got incredibly distant. I didn't push as I dived into helping him and my work, but said she was happy. We can help him now, and it explains a lot. Soon, I was coming home and she was closing AIM chat. No biggie, then hiding her phone. I finally ask, are you cheating? Her ex, the father of her first child, who she put up for adoption, had contacted her, and she had unresolved feelings she wanted to explore. She talked about open relationships. How everything was my fault, she set updates with him, bringing him to the house. She said she missed out on college parting because of me. After three days of abuse, she asked me to move. I told her G was coming with me. She ignored it most of the time anyway. I took G and we left. Apparently, her ex wanted a family. Even wrote an email to her describing how to get me out of the picture so they could raise G together and that the autism diagnosis was wrong. She was right, etc. She abandoned the computer at her dad's, and he gave it to G. 
so I got that piece later as I was cleaning it out. I was disgusted by what else I found. The separation came with the usual blaming myself over and over about everything. She alternated between sweet and ripping me apart. She dropped G off halfway through a shift or screamed loud enough to hear on the phone outside a closed vehicle. Once she saw the ambulance and skidded in behind it to yell at me, my partner played traction and called the police department so we could leave. Then there was the you're such a good person. Can you help me? Can you do this? She went partying all the time. Stopped visits for months on end, trips everywhere. She broke up with her ex and found another boy. Friends told me what she was doing. G was a mess. Her dad and stepmother and my family jumped in after seeing what it was doing to him. I had to be strong because he needed me. Inside I was a mess, but kids come first. I became a single parent and for years was mom and dad until recently. He called me both interchangeably. I made sure and continue to make sure she sees him one way or another. I kept her family involved even as she tried to isolate herself and G from them. Regular reports got him into a special school. Later, she insulted it as a place for retards and useless people. I always tried to be fair and err on the side of nice, getting advice from her family, mine and friends with, am I being fair or overprotective crazy, etc. I got lawyered up, had to drop out of college to deal with everything. When mediation came, my lawyer requested separate meetings with the mediator who found out why soon enough. The mediator reported to the judge my ex was unable to reasonably engage in mediation. She stormed out. When my turn came along, she had left a voicemail, which both the mediator and a lawyer wanted to listen. Halfway through, I was almost in tears. They asked me to stop. Wasn't even the worst voicemail she left that week. The actual court case was pretty easy. Her parents even testified on for me. The judge gave me primary residence. We got joint parental rights, and in my request, the judge gave my ex reasonable contact, which I had to use to put her on supervised visitation a few times over the intervening years as her mental health deteriorated. I know Angel, I could have tried harder or gotten her help. Done so many things, but hindsight is twenty twenty. She's much better now in a relationship with a decent guy and takes G every weekend. Fifteen years old now. I'm trying my best to give him a happy normal childhood and getting him what he needs and some of what he wants. I picked up the pieces when she told him he was bad and Santa never brings bad kids gifts. Cops are all evil. Him crying to me as why his mom doesn't like him. The relationship is improving. To this day, I can still hear her saying to me. You were always just a safety net. And now that I have my career at place and a kid, it's time to cut the safety net loose. I've been on one date in 10 years and have no desire to be close to another person than as a friend. I tried, but I pulled back and sabotaged myself every time. I can't seem to help it. I survived child abuse, domestic abuse, plus being an EMT, but I feel numb, empty, and worthless. I enjoy helping people with whatever issues they have, or just make life easier. But to be honest, I think I've checked out. I don't have hopes for the future or long-term plans. When I try to think about after my kiddo moves out, and just blank. Like, I simply don't care. A big part of me wants to ghost everyone except G when he graduates and move far away. Advice, constructive criticism, questions, welcome. First response from Blue Dolphins 1221. G is one lucky young man to have a wonderful father and advocate in you. Have you sought out individual counseling to help overcome the betrayal trauma? DOP responds. Tried it after my brain broke after a stress COVID induced heart attack with lovely anxiety and PTSD. Tercher 78 chimes in. I don't think there's anything wrong with you, but you've surrounded yourself with everything stressful, much not by your choice. You've picked a stressful career dealing with hurt and dying people. You choose a relationship with an undiagnosed bipolar or BPD partner who never got treatment and you raised a kid with additional diagnoses around that environment. 
none of this is healthy or conducive to building strong self-esteem. Honestly, you've done very well given the circumstances and raised a great son. Even forcing a relationship with his mom that is finally showing some fruit. That was all you. Not her. You've given so much of yourself. You've sacrificed school and a career for your child and for your spouse at the time. And after all that crap, you've still turned out pretty good. But I'm not surprised you find it hard to date and I'm not surprised you feel numb, empty, or worthless. You have virtually no one to fill your emotional cup. You've given so much of yourself over time yet received not nearly as much back. The cup, runneth, empty. What are you doing for yourself? You don't have to date, but build some fulfilling hobbies for yourself. You need to start building yourself back up after decades of circling the gutter. It's time you became selfish in your life. Find ways to be happy for you, not just your son. One more response from Blacksmith OK 4686. I am so proud of you. Walk tall and know what a genuine role model for your son you are. I feel a lot of familiarity in your explanation and the congruences are chilling. She called me a lifeboat, and the cruelty like eerie congruent. Also divorced, also primary custody. My son is eight. You are an inspiration. Moving on to the next story. I want to know how to accept and move on when my whole world is shattered, and I still love the one person who I thought had my back forever and was my best friend. I miss him terribly and the team that we were. Our kids are suffering, and it's hard to be strong for them while carrying this enormous weight. Long post, 2021 was undoubtedly the worst year of my life. I'm afraid 2022 won't be much better. This past August, I was blindsided while sitting in my favorite spot on earth. The man who I thought was our family protector and my true love, I will never forget the words he uttered that changed my life as I know it. This isn't working out anymore. I don't love you, and I'm not attracted to you. As I hyperventilated and repeated no, 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 you aren't serious. What about our kids? Is there someone else? No, no, no. My husband said, I can't believe you were surprised. I've been thinking about this for a year and a half, and this is the only path forward. I was in shock and can barely remember the moments that followed. I know my question, why aren't we going to work on this? Why are you just telling me now and deciding unilaterally that our 13 years of building a life and family has done? Just like that. Are you sure there's no one else? He kept telling me that there wasn't and he would do so for the next five weeks whenever I ax. My children were nearby and heard every word. They were frightened, shocked, scared, but most of all completely taken by surprise. We all were. Was an explosion that caused irreparable damage to the very cells of my body. I will never be the same, physiologically, emotionally, mentally, physically. Every fiber in my body changed that instant. Those words were spoken. The hours, days, weeks that followed were a blur and a whirlwind of depression, suicidal thoughts, bargaining, deep psychological pain and absolute helplessness. I had no idea this was even a possibility, let alone having it dropped on my lap and the door slammed in my face, his rationale? This was the decision. He's not changing his mind. There's nothing I can do. Move on. Suddenly. My best friend had turned into my personal nightmare with the flick of a switch the coldness, mean comments, blame, and harshness were more than my heart could handle. I was in a state of shock and I wanted the pain to stop. This can't really be happening. There is no way I'm living my real life right now. Somewhere in the universe, my normal life is carrying on. Something glitched got mixed up. And I'll return to that universe soon. I would think over and over. I was told that my bad behavior got us here. I was controlling, had a temper, was an amazing mother, but he just didn't love me anymore. Early on, he told me that it was like I committed murder and wouldn't accept the punishment. Now I'm a murderer. I sobbed. That was a bad analogy, but you need to accept the punishment for your behavior. What about telling someone you weren't happy with them? He answered back with have you ever tried to talk to you? 
Every statement beat me down smaller and smaller. I was to blame. This was my fault. Despite working through postpartum depression, being misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder, being diagnosed with premenstrual, dysphoric disorder, anxiety, depression, and fibromyalgia. All this was thrown under my face. Why was something I went through 10 years earlier holding me hostage? Not only was I diagnosed with all of the above, I was on hormones to get pregnant. Suffered from severe polycystic ovaries, many miscarriages, and eventually had a hysterectomy. Finally, during these past few years, I really felt like things were looking up. My health was never better. I was still in amazing shape, and my mental health was up there too. Life was great. Kids were getting older. There was more support around to take the kids and let us date again and have some romance. I was really looking forward to our next chapter, and then this happened. Nothing can prepare you. Even if I had known something was off, nothing would have made this more palpable. They'll also control of your own life as beyond painful. To be at the mercy of someone who disregards and disrespects you that much is extreme anguish. The one person you need when you are happy, sad, scared, excited, is the same one tormenting and punishing you. It's unforgivable. I guess it took for granted how perfect and mundane our life was. We have beautiful children, a lovely home, a complete summer paradise 15 minutes from our door, incredible families that are intertwined and so special to each other. We can't ask for anything more. Except my husband wanted love and happiness. He told me in the weeks that followed that he was being selfish, wanted to be happy on his own, had an idea of what his life was going to be like, and envisioned who he wanted to be with. Every day was a new bomb being dropped, a new insult a new excuse, a new justification. None of it made sense. In mid-September, after weeks of begging, pleading, bargaining, taking courses, reading books, all of the things one should not do, I confronted him again. Is there someone else? No. Is there someone else? No. I know you more than anyone in this world. I'm looking into your eyes and you're lying. Is there someone else? No. I can tell by the look on your face and your eyes. You aren't telling the truth. There's no way you just suddenly and abruptly end a marriage out of the blue. Is there someone else? Big sigh. I have feelings for someone at work. Almost as painful as the words I had heard a few weeks earlier. Who is it? I'm not telling you, who is it? My voice escalated, not telling you. This went on a few rounds until I finally yelled. Get the F out of here seriously? Yes, seriously. Get out you effing a hole. He went to our cottage that night. I called him to ask some questions. I was seething. He said he started talking to her in June. Began talking about personal things in July. He told her he wanted to leave me and she supported him. End of story. Except it wasn't because as that conversation was happening across town, she was telling her husband that there was, in fact, someone else too. The next day, us betrayed spouses would make contact and swap stories. Wow. We were suckered. They planned this out in July. Told us the same thing on the same evening in August. And then boldly held on to the lie that there was no one else for five more weeks. But as we learned that night, there absolutely was. And two families with young children were destroyed, and they gaslit us with a blowtorch. It is interesting to note that this is my husband's second, 11 year I am number two. I was also the same age. Give or take a few months of his first wife when he abruptly left her after feeling guilty about making out with someone else. There were rumors of cheating that were floating around, but he never confirmed. The new girl, a fair partner, homewrecker, whatever we call her, she's 14 years younger. I am seven but that age gap isn't enough anymore, I guess. You don't need a psychology degree to assess the situation. It's pretty much obvious that his ego, among other things, needed stroking. It's also obvious that family life boards him. He wants to be a single parent for half the time and living a pretty rich life with our family unit was so terrible that he won't think twice about losing it all to be with her. He does claim that this would have happened anyway and it doesn't matter about her, really. 
He doesn't want to be married and wants to be alone. Then why ruin your reputation and lower your morals and values to try to pull the wool over our eyes? His relationship with our children has been forever changed among many other relationships we have. There are more respectful ways to conduct yourself. If you're unhappy, you say something. You work on it. Make the effort because you are married and committed for life. You don't find someone who will take the bait and help you get the nerve up to surprise and change lives forever because you have someone to cling to now. More Psychology 101. There are a whole lot of undeniable aspects of mental health presently involved in this story, but he claims he's fine. It's everyone else that is wrong or doesn't get it, right? Makes total sense. That's why there are so many studies published, books written, and bewildered therapists. Mine, and ours must be an anomaly. After all, the pandemic did bring you both together, soulmates, true loves, in a month. Go figure, Psych 101. That was just the beginning. So much more gaslighting, lying, manipulating, belittling, controlling, and disrespectful behavior has transpired in the last few months. I just can't understand any of this. I wish you would break it off with the affair partner and at the very least be alone. Our poor kids shouldn't have to worry about her or even know about her, but they do. And it's sickening, they are sickening. How is this allowed to happen during work time during a global pandemic between two people of authority? Boggles my mind, but he has a justification for everything and thinks being in a relationship with her now and starting it while we were married is totally fine. We are still married, so I'm not sure how that is okay. But it's classic a pair fog, limerence, and I'm guessing the easiest cowardly way to exit our marriage. It would have been nice to know that he'd respect our value our marriage or me or our kids whatsoever. I am 100% suffering from betrayal trauma. Every second, I feel like a bomb is going to get dropped, and I'm constantly on edge. I feel a bit stronger every day, but facing this alone is horrible and he gets to distract himself with her. I'm so mortified and embarrassed, especially for my poor kids. They misbehave, act out in anger, and are changed just as I am. We had the perfect family so much to be grateful for. Why would you not protect that at all costs? I don't understand. I'm struggling a lot. Everything is happening fast, and I haven't had a second to breathe. I still love my husband with all my heart which I never thought would be possible if something like this happened. I'm so hurt, angry, scared, and just so sad. I value family and tact families, commitment. After all these years, I realized he was looking for his first ticket out. Seems so shallow and cowardly. You think you know someone? Now looking forward to 2022 and everything that it will bring if my husband doesn't snap out of it. I had written him a letter asking him to at least consider putting the kids first and being alone to focus on their well-being. Haven't heard a word, but considering he hasn't read any of my articles, books, docs, etc., I don't think he would start now. I think there was a crisis of some sort happening, but he does not agree. It is hard to reconcile that the man I chose and thought would be amazing at being my partner and father of my children doesn't want the job anymore and can just quit. It's so painful and my heart breaks for my kids. I just miss him terribly and cannot fathom being sexual with someone else ever. He is my person. I guess I am over committed to my vows. I have no idea how to move past that. First reaction from TBT51. I feel your pain. Personally, I felt like I had suddenly stepped into a horror movie. Somebody that was supposed to have my back turned out to be a monster who could care less if they were inflicting severe pain on me. All she could do was blame me for not meeting her expectations in our marriage as if that is some type of free pass to betray me. See this guy for who he really is. And not how you wanted him to be. Be strong for your kids and be as unemotional with him as you can possibly be. He will do whatever he wants with his wonderful partner and you requesting that he be alone is not healthy probably made him feel powerful. So stop giving him that power. It's okay to agree, but understand that good things will also come out of this. You will find strength that you never knew you had. Good luck. 
don't blame me one times in. I'm so sorry for what you're going through. However, this is going to be a hard pill to swallow and will be upsetting. You need to go as low contact as you can besides uploading kit schedules. You need to see several attorneys and pick the best to get finances in order. Get a co-parenting app. Proceed with divorce. Do not play the pick-me dance because you always end up losing. He will either choose his family and reconcile once he has no options left, or he will stay in the affair fog. Peace. Next reaction from La Chanel Addict. I'm so sorry this happened to you. This is awful. You're doing the pick-me dance and it is exhausting. I agree with needing to go low contact. We can't make people want to be with us no matter how many years have passed. I hope this year looks up for you. Next thought from Zoe Dean. It sounds like he's just chasing whatever makes him feel better. Doesn't have any sense of true commitment. He'll never be happy. That's his choice, and he'll use whatever words to justify it. I know the feeling of betrayal hurts so hard. It hurts because you're a good person. Focus on your kids and yourself. One day at a time. Torster78 chimes in. Not to minimize your pain and suffering, but the longer you get from this and the further your emotions get from him, you will realize there was issues with significant age gap here and he's following the same gameplay with this new supply. There was a power imbalance in this relationship, and it's due to his serious mental health issues. Final thought from Spinoke. The only way through grief time. I'm so sorry you're feeling the sadness, and I hope the very best for you. Life throws these challenges at us, and we respond through our anger and grief. But we are creatures that need to love and be loved, so the answer is to continue to love others and accept love. I'm not a religious man, but I know that life requires faith. We have to have faith that our love of others will mean something and will bring happiness to others, and that love will return to us. It will be hard to trust from here, but I hope you won't lose your faith and love and others. Good luck and all the best to you.